Hi, this is Mike Lavelle. In this presentation, we're going to talk about high-performance schools, where we combine energy sustainability with building information modeling, or BIM, and real-time operations. Our goals are to reduce the energy usage and costs from 15 to 30 percent. It can be done. We want to improve the building sustainability by minimizing low efficiency power plant peaking operations. We want to improve the building environmental conditions by optimizing temperature and ventilation systems. And of course, we want to develop a teaching resource where we can take advantage of the heating and air conditioning operations and the energy that's being consumed in the building as part of the overall curriculum. The process starts with an energy assessment where we evaluate energy measures and we must compute the financial return on investment. The plan, an energy plan, needed, is needed. And here we add energy policies, a location for the energy information to be disseminated. We organize training programs, and we provide ongoing educational videos. The assessment starts with an, an inspection of the building heating and air conditioning and the envelope. We query the staff on equipment operations. We understand temperature control algorithms. Very important. It determines almost the most important things of operating the building. And we create videos that look at current operating practices as well as subsets of those for educational purposes. When we look at energy measures, we're looking to develop a list of measures for a specific building that shows what kind of energy savings is opportunity. We provide the installation costs and we compute the ROI. Our energy plan involves awareness, space, and equipment. For awareness, we're looking at students, faculty, parents, and community. We want everyone involved. For space, we're looking at how to better utilize the existing space to use less energy. And there are a number of techniques that work well. For equipment, we of course want to know how we can better operate the equipment to conserve energy. And for that, we use energy simulation. Our assessment methods use the building information or model building information modeling process which is an open standards method of putting a building together and you'll see a 3D version of a building soon later in this presentation we provide visual navigation using Google Earth and Maps and we want to link it to daily building operations through the school calendar our energy star rating begins with a process of looking at how much energy is being consumed, both electricity and gas. The energy star is provided by EPA. This particular building had a score of 5. Not good. 95% of all the buildings in the country were better than this particular building. We look at the energy bills. And here we see a number of interesting factors. Notice we have actual demand and building demand. Demand is that portion of the bill that the utilities charge customers for the privilege of having their generators somewhere in the, in the network grid ready to go. Very important. We look at energy costs and how the costs are distributed in the building. In this case, energy itself, which is kilowatt hours, uh, took 51% of the total charges. Demand was only 7%, and that was a tip-off. That something was wrong here. The building was consuming far too much energy compared to its demand for energy. Look at electric, electricity usage. Here we want to break down, and we get this from the building modeling process. Heat rejected, space cooling, area lights, and there's an opportunity then after we do the simulation to understand what the mix is as it affects the overall building in the future. Fossil fuel, equally important. Here we're looking at a combined uh, of equipment, hot water, space heating. And of course, we'll prepare our report with an executive summary that provides the overview of what's going on as well as a list of the energy conservation opportunities. To make this happen, we need to know some more of the details. And wherever it's possible, we'd like to have the interval data on a monthly basis. Actually, it's on a 15-minute basis from your utility. And here we're looking at it on a monthly evaluation. So we have an understanding of how 
best we might impact the use of electricity in the building. Let's take a look at a school example. And in this example, we're going to use Google Earth. We're going to navigate to it. We're going to look at some of the building features, the boilers, the chillers. And we're going to uh, continue with the features, looking at the cooling towers and the air handlers. OK, let's zoom in to the building. Here it is. I'm going to toggle the building around a little bit. You can see its layout here. Notice that it's in uh, what looks like, a th and it is, a three-dimensional image of the building. This was created in BIM. Here we're going to move towards the back of the building where the mechanical room is located. Whenever you're looking at a building like this, you expect to see um, information. We'll start with the boiler room. It's important to know what kind of equipment we have in the building. This is a good way to do it. Documented record built right in. Of course, there's some chillers involved too, in most cases. Actually, the chillers are going to need cooling towers. So we need to have a record of it, both a pictorial record and a documented description of what's going on with the particular pieces of equipment. Here's an air handler. Uh, usually it's above a ceiling. No one ever sees these rascals. But we'll take a look here, and in a few minutes we'll see some data coming in. Here's some real-time data that we're collecting. Mixed air temperature, discharge air temperature, space temperature, and return air temperature. Here the return air is 72 degrees. So one of the things that comes out of this is the opportunity to mix with building information modeling the real-time data that's actually running inside the building. And this gives us the ability to understand better what's going on in the building at any moment in time. Notice we're running strip charts here and the game plan is to understand over a period of time how the particular piece of equipment is running. Let's jump over here to the terminal air supply unit. This will take a second to come up and as we're looking at it we notice we've got space air temperature and we also notice that the discharge air temperature is reliant upon the fact that this particular unit has a heating coil in it. Very important. I've walked into boiler rooms on occasion in the middle of the summer, middle of July, and found the boilers running full force, full blast, while the chillers are also running at full capacity too. And when we're looking at this information on a longer term basis, we need to understand what's happened and how can we improve it. So we know this is our current electricity consumption, for example, in our gas. How can the building operate in the future? Ah, that comes from using building simulation, looking at the optimized results of our analysis. To be practical about it then, we need the kind of ECOs, an understanding of what the opportunities are to sustain energy efficiency, what kind of savings in gas, electricity, dollar amounts, and payback. And the nuts and bolts of it are all down in the utility meters. If we don't have access to interval data, we'll need to create it in the future. This is really important. This is how we tell how the building is actually running in detail. I think that uh, you can see from this that the overall opportunity for saving energy is really good. We can offer an opportunity for improved sustainability. We can upgrade the environmental operations inside the building. We can, of course, reduce power plant CO2 emissions. And usually we can have a return on investment range of somewhere from three months to three years. Yes, it is possible to get three months. At the same time, we can include students, faculty, staff, and patrons. Thanks very much.